Back to Football HQ with Coach K. Just making a video today to document the amazing stash. I guess while I'm at it, I'll go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about running an offense with a sniffer. Just, just some run game things you can look at, as well as some things through the passing game. Don't forget as well, um, we've got a few playbooks if you want to look at. I've kind of put them together watching Oklahoma, as well as Baylor. going to make more in the future as well. So um, take a look at those if you're interested in the description. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. I'm glad you're here. Let's talk about using a sniffer back. Let's start by defining what a sniffer is. I think most coaches would know, um, but some people have different vocabulary. So you see right here, Clemson, this is a fullback in the old, on the old sense, but he is um, kind of a sixth lineman. He is um, not quite a wing, but he is between the tackle and the guard. You can also have him be behind the tackle. You can put him wherever you want. What I'm gonna show you is, um, where he is between the guard and the tackle and the B gap most of the time. You can move him, adjust him by the play that you run. Be sure that you're not giving a key to the defensive coordinator about what you might be running, but you can do that a lot of different ways. So uh, let's talk about why would you even want to use a sniffer? Number one, it's an extra blocker in the box. And let's go back. So you see right here, Clemson actually has six on six. A lot of teams and some that I face as well will stay too high against your sniffer. Um, especially if you have a threat, a vertical threat in the passing game. If you have one on either side, you can really um, use that sniffer um, to get the extra blocker. Um, but even if, you know, even if you are seeing a one high cover three team, you're still getting that extra blocker in the box. You might not be having an advantage, but you're getting, um, you're gaining um, a plus one. You can use deception. In a minute, I'll show you a clip um, where Central Florida and their, their sniffer to give some false reads. Um, split zone, our first play we're going to look at, you know, gives you some deception. You can be creative with um, that six blocker. You can do different things with them. And then using play action fakes, you can um, slow those linebackers down, get them coming towards the line of scrimmage to respect the running game that you've created. And then you can slip your, line, your uh, sniffer out. You can also get your faster guys over the middle, um, do things like that. So let's first look at that split zone that I mentioned. Um, it's a very basic staple of a lot of offenses with a sniffer and you're just running zone one way. We're running inside zone to the right and you're just bringing your sniffer back across. You wanna be sure that you're not always using the sniffer as a lead blocker where he can, linebackers can just key him and he takes them to the play. So here's a good example. Um, your play is influencing to the right and your sniffer is coming back across the formation um, to the left, to the offensive left. So you can't key him because that's a, a play that you can run a lot. Now I have all these plays drawn up against a three, four defense. Um, you can obviously run them again against any defense for the most part, um, but that's what I see the most. I always have a, a bubble built in and a skinny post for an RPO look. That's just something that I have in my offense. Um, so, but really the play is happening right in here. But yeah, if you were to get, you know, the backer walked up, you have an easy bu a bubble. If they want to walk their safety up and play him in the running game, you have an RPO. So there are some things you can do there. That's why that's built in. But sniffer wise, split zone, easy, th easy play to run. Just run inside zone and have him block the backside. Coaching point, be sure that he is attacking the near shoulder to the line of scrimmage. He, there's no good to attack um, the high shoulder towards the quarterback and running back, he can just get off and make the play. So uh, be sure he's also attacking really um, right at the line of scrimmage. You know, if he wants to arc out, let him do that. Do not, do not go high to low, go low to high with the attacking point, with the aiming point, but aim for that, the, 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 up, the downfield shoulder, if you want to say that, the one closest to the line of scrimmage, however you want to make that vocabulary happen. And you can drill that with trash cans, with dummies, you can do a lot with that. ISO is an easy play. Now he is the lead blocker. Um, again, I have a double team on the nose and they just keep, they keep with it just to get movement. If you want to have him peel off and go to this backer, because this is a tough block, that's fine. Um, but again, you're, you are ISOing this linebacker and going right at him. Still have the bubble, still have the uh, RPO um, skinny post on the weak side. Okay, GH counter. So your linemen are going to run power. Um, 
don't tell them to run counter, but the, the overall scheme of the play is you do have two guys pulling. So that's why it's counter. Um, so you can call it power with an H pull, whatever you want to call it. But so the first, these five are, you know, you're getting down blocks and we're getting the block right here and we're staying locked on in this situation. Now you could very well down block if you want to get, be sure that you get to this backer. And then now you've got a kick and a wrap. Um, I, li I like to get him blocked at the point of attack so we can, um, we, we can be sure we get this guy blocked, but it's up to you. But again, using him as a puller um, is a great thing. Let's look at how C UCF did it a few years ago with Scott Frost as their head coach. A little bit different, but it's a nice deceptive twist on counter. Sorry, not the best quality. Let's, and I have, the play has just started, but you see the sniffer was on the left side and you're getting a pull to the left from right to left. And they have chosen to leave the end and the guard kicks and then the sniffer leads and he gets the linebacker and they're through the hole. So that's a, another twist on it. And you see, they have it a little different than I do. They, they leave the end, they, they get their down blocks, which look gold, look at those down blocks. And then there's one free defender, which the sniffer is gonna have. And so that's same side counter or same side power if you want, but a great twist. Um, great little scheme there by Scott Frost a few years ago at UCF. Okay, you can run option. I have it called option, but my quarterback knows he is taking left, right, left, and then pitching. It is not a true option. Um, if you wanted to make it a true option, if you have an athlete, maybe you just try to hook the end and you read off the outside linebacker. You can do that. But again, we know that we are, um, we are not going to keep it as the quarterback. Um, this end should not be able to get through your quarterback to the linebacker to make a play. If he does to the running back, excuse me, to make a play. If he does, your running back is just too slow. I would, um, I would block this up right here. I didn't change that for the uh, presentation, but you want to block, I wouldn't necessarily run my RPO. I would have him block that up right there, but um, we're zoning away from it. And we are uh, reading the end. If you wanted to zone to it, you could do that and make, and really make it a, no option at all. And he's just one, two, three pitch and everybody's kind of um, manned up. You can do that. But I like getting, giving a false key to these linebackers as they, as they see down blocks coming from the uh, offensive lineman. It's a good change up again to where they can't really key on. You're giving them some false keys there and you still get a lead on the outside linebacker. Okay. The power read. I have another video about this. It says unique option for a quarterback who does not run the option with, with, with great feet. So the option is either to give it out on the bash or what we call dash handoff on the outside or to do a little shovel pass right here to the sniffer who has kind of snuck behind the pulling guard and, uh, and you're reading the end who's unblocked. This time you don't block him. So you have to have a way to get that communicated to your tackle because it's a different play and you can do that. Or maybe you just always you know do what they have here. It's up to you. Um, it's been a great play for us. We've got another video with some clips that you can look at. Um, put it somewhere up here, put a little tag to it. Okay, wham, all right, you're leaving the nose. Now it's probably easier if they're in the even front, if he's in a shade for your center to get away from him to escape a collision. And then your, your sniffer just cleans this clock from the side legally. Um, you don't have to worry about a block in the back. You might remind um, some people of that because you're in the free blocking zone. Um, so and it's just a downhill handoff, but you're in the free blocking zone, but tell your running back to read this wham block you get to the backers and, and you've got to play but we just call that wham you can tag that to your iso play um, you can do that however you want okay you, you do you're gonna to have to throw the ball at some point otherwise the argus is going to stack the box on you um, so you you're showing split zone up front but i have i would call this a full slide protection the h is somewhere in here you want him to to slow it down to show that he's going to pick up this block like he was running split zone and then he gets out two to three yards, no more. And you've got a boot action from the quarterback. His eyes are right here on this linebacker. And you're looking at, you got a sale concept out here and you can just look high to low. Although probably you're gonna look just one to two. Um, this corner would likely vacate. If you're really trying to throw this, um, spread him out this way, probably isn't the best way to do it, but you can still do it if you want. But uh, we call it boot and then he's sliding out. All right, but it's, it's off of the, off the split zone look, it looks the exact same. Um, you just uh, giving a, getting a keep right there and getting outside. Okay, curl flat is an easy one. 
So you can do a lot of things. So this is really just a two by two set. You've got two receivers on each side. So you can have your sniffer substitute for that receiver on a lot of plays. You can even have him run, you know, you can get him vertical. Um, here and just speed out, um, curl flat concept, high lowing this linebacker right here. Pretty easy. Again, I still want to develop the play fake. I have full slide. You do it however you want. You may not want your backer to, uh, to be picking up that end, totally understand. But um, just pick your side if you're the quarterback and you've got the H in part of the action. Cross, again, out of trips is the same thing. You can just have your sniffer take over that number three three receivers route. Um, this is trips cross. All right. Um, again, the play fake should be able to draw these guys up a little bit, draw your inside line and give you a little bit of a window to throw this. I would go one to two to three if I was going to throw it myself. You could also though, again, be in a 22 or, you know, in a, a two by two set with a sniffer over here and he runs the speed out on Y cross as well. So again, lots of things you can do with it. That's just a few ideas, but um, if you have that kind of fullback guy and you want to use it in your spread, 10, 11, per, 11 personnel offense, do that. Um, you know, don't forget to check below if you're interested in playbooks. Baylor does a lot of great things with tight ends and sniffers. Um, please subscribe if you haven't. Come back soon. Love to hear from you.